वेलकम बैक टू बी रिच आफ्टर नामकल माई टीम डिसाइडेड टू डू इन इवेंट इन वेलोर वी हैव फैमिली कनेक्शन विद वेलोर माई फादर वेंट टू कॉलेज इन वेलोर ही अटेंडेड द वूर इज कॉलेज सो वी आर डूइंग इन इवेंट इन वेलोर ऑन द ट्वेंटी एथ एंड ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई दो डिजायर ऑफ अटेंडिंग दिस इवेंट शुड कॉन्टैक्ट द व्हाट्सएप नंबर गिवन बिलो एंड सेंड अ मैसेज टू द जी मेल आई डी दैट इज ऑल्सो गिवन ट्राई टू कॉल एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल to avoid rush and disappointment because in namakal we had to decline a lot of people who wanted to attend the event once again i thank you for supporting beerich hi everyone welcome back to beerich chacha that's another video for us today he's got something from warren buffett and warren buffett's views we'll discuss those and try to understand his views and why it's relevant to us without wasting any further time shashwat what do you have yeah so Warren Buffett is a figure who we've all admired we still continue to admire and take inspiration from but it's interesting to think about how Warren Buffett reacts to macroeconomic situations because he usually talks about companies and how a uh, share is not just a stock but rather a portion or of a business and he talks about the S&P 500 is a cross section of America rather than just a number so we look at uh, Warren Buffett for inspiration and words of wisdom with regards to investing but most of us forget to think about how buffett would talk about economic situations and that is something i want to cover today and warren buffett's uh way of thinking when it comes to inflation so if you look at warren buffett and his letters in the early 60s especially when he was running his partnership we see that warren buffett actually has a quite a complex view of inflation and he's quite mistrusting about uh, securities such as um, bonds because he knows that inflation will always rear its ugly head regardless of which government is in control regardless of what whoever says because financial austerity and saying that i'm going to reduce the fiscal deficit is only uh, viable on paper but when you see a government voted into office with the millions of expenses and appeasing the different kind of voters who vote for these governments we see that all of them at some level want some sort of freebies from the government and we see that the government cannot say no because they need to rely on the voter base to vote for them in the next election another aspect of why governments love inflation is because let's say i'm uncle sam that is basically the us government or let's say i'm the government of india and i i have borrowed money by giving out uh, treasury securities in the us and government bonds in india gsec government securities in in, in india so i have borrowed 100 rupees from you and today i have the power to affect the rate of inflation so if i push the rate of inflation to let's say 7% that and assuming the 7% translates to a rise in my income as well that will basically mean that i have effectively cut the amount of money i have to pay you this is called the inflation tax which means that the government as time progresses because of inflation has to pay its uh, lenders less and that is a strategy which all governments have been secretly using not so secretly because it's quite open which they've been using for a long time when it comes to this warren buffett says and recognizes this and he says that look bonds are the one tool at least in the us which are very finicky when it comes to the rate of inflation because you have a clear yield on bonds there's no company underlying the bond which is going to grow at a certain pace or it's going to uh, let you cash in on the capital gains it makes as a company regardless of whether a company performs well or performs poorly they're going to pay you the same yield and this is something which is fixed so bond holders cannot gain an appreciation in terms of the company gaining uh, more profits which is why warren buffett says that when it comes to bonds you have to be extremely careful about the rate of inflation luckily for us in india the rate of return on bonds especially on highly rated corporate bonds always tend to generally beat the rate of inflation uh, this has at least been the trend for the last 10 15 years and will possibly continue to be so however in the us the story was different where at a lot of times treasury securities especially which is basically the securities which the governments issue the us government those securities were unable to beat the rate of inflation when warren buffett was running his partnership for a long time and when your treasury securities fail to beat the rate of inflation what ends up happening is that you take a loss on the bond we discussed this in a risks of bond investing video which we made a few days back So that being said Warren Buffett says that it doesn't mean that you stay out of bonds. Bonds generally do uh, give a good rate of return for those who specifically need it. So he recognizes the fact that let's say that you need a routine income, let's say you need an income paid to you monthly or biannually or even annually 
it makes sense to buy bonds because the gains you make in a stock are not paid to you in your bank account. Warren Buffett knows this and he knows that some of his investors in his partnership needed that regular income. Suppose, let's say you're in your retirement and you have 100% of your retirement in stocks. The dividend yield you get is not going to be much. Most of the gains which come will be the companies which you've invested in making more profits and reinvesting it in its own business. And none of that will come to you for expenditure. Whereas if you have, let's say, 80% of your retirement funds in bonds, you'll see that uh, you'll get a sizable yield on the bonds which you've parked in your retirement fund. And what that means is that you have money to spend. So depending on what kind of needs you have, maybe going for bonds might be the only option you have. So recognizing that, Warren Buffett says that, look, you need to figure out, uh, you can't predict inflation. He says that predicting inflation is useless. No one can get it right, even 20% of the time. Usually, very fast, you're proven uh, to be wrong. And he says that the cemetery, that is the graveyard, has a huge section for those who think they can predict macroeconomics. So that being said, Warren Buffett still says that you should try to go for good yields when they pop out and you should hope for the best in the sense that you should be very careful in what kind of time duration you pick on these bonds. Because if you pick a, let's say you pick a 35 year bond, treasury security, what ends up happening is you're locked into it forever, almost, because 35 years is quite a long time, especially when you're nearing retirement. Hey guys, I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to announce that we have successfully launched our Substack where we talk about companies, US markets, European markets, and Japan as well. And these insights are going to be delivered straight to you to, to your email, as well as the Substack app. We hope you go check it out. The link is moatinvesting.substack.com. The link will be on the screen right here and also in the description. Thank you for checking it out. So he says that uh, you need to pick and choose which kind of bond you want to get into. Sometimes going for the shorter bonds might be better off because you do, you're not exposed to the interest rate risk because uh, the bond will expire in a year and you get to take the money out and invest it in a higher yielding bond later. But as of as how things stand today, it's generally uh, accepted that the central bank is usually prefers a bit of inflation rather than deflation. And there's an aversion to banks, central banks and governments to go get into deflation because nobody likes negative growth. So. All that being said, bonds may not be that bad of a place to be, especially when you look at the lessons you can learn from Warren Buffett's views on investment. What do you think about this? I agree. But the reason why Buffett doesn't like bonds is also for a simple reason. Stocks, the way they outpaces bonds by a mile and a yard. If you, Especially in the long term, if you're looking at stocks and you buy it at uh, these lower than intrinsic value and you hold on to it for a long period of time, there's no way bonds can catch up to this. Yeah. So bonds only offer one thing. They offer security. And if you're not unsure about where to invest, because we're not Warren Buffett's all of us, and uh, we cannot really see as good as he can see. So, and we can't analyze the way that he does. So, and we don't have the time either. Most of us are working in jobs. Warren Buffett does this for a living. So there's a big difference. We can't do this for a living. So, taking that into consideration, bonds is a hedge for us. When you don't have the bandwidth to do it, it offers a sense of security. And this is also true for governments also. Like uh, before, Indian government used to issue bonds in dollars and other foreign currencies. From 1990s, we switched it out to only issuing it for INR. And uh, even the recent green bonds which you issued were all in INR for the simple reason to try and control and stabilize the rupee. Same way, as investors, we invest in bonds for the same reason, to offer ourselves some stability and assured income. Yes, it does not beat inflation. If you're holding, let's say, a very cheap bond, let's say you managed to buy a bond previously, uh, 10 years ago, at 6%, 7%, and now inflation is at 9%, 10%, it's really not doing you any good. But fortunately, most of the bonds we do look at and recommend to look at are bonds which are not at uh, those kind of tenures. Yes, there are bonds which run for perpetuity, but the advantage in those bonds are you can exit those bonds if you need to. But the other bonds which we usually ask you to look at are bonds which are in lower tenure, maximum of five years. And that is for this reason of what happens with interest rates. The way interest rates move, then inflation moves, it's very hard to see. But five years is more than enough to navigate for us. If you need to exit a bond, be it, or by the time five years you're able to hold on, the bond would have matured and you would have cycled out of it anyways. There are very few bonds which we recommend which are just being freshly issued. 
most of the bonds which we are looking at are bonds which are being already recycled and someone's been holding on to it and they want to get offload it and that's when we are moving in to pick it up so those also offer better rates because those people usually would want to discount and sell it because they have a situation where they need to exit the bond so that can prove beneficial when you're a buyer same reason why stock prices sometimes go below intrinsic value is the man needs the cash the fi needs to exit india for some reason or another so they start discounting the price they don't care as long as they get some money they're ready to leave this happens in the bond markets too and um, th- there's a nice quote which warren buffett says he says that it's better to swallow the tough pill i know it's a very very difficult pill to swallow when you buy a bond and tomorrow the interest rates are raised further however it's better than being choked to death is what he says and being choked to death is basically uh, investing in um, stocks and then seeing your money go down to nothing because interest rates act like gravity for stocks so the higher the interest rate the more the gravitational force stock prices come down and tomorrow even if you want to liquidate you will not be able to liquidate at uh, even close to the value you paid for the stocks even though you bought it at a wonderful price and it's probably going to go up further if you need to liquidate you won't be able to at the price which you bought it for in comparison to that warren buffett says that maybe it's okay to swallow the tough pill and take a small hit on your chin when you're forced to and uh, that's why anand says first close all your debts you know once you got rid of your debts next thing is work on having some emergency fund in terms of gold after that before all that also make sure you have health insurance because you never know when you need health insurance after you do all that and you're financially stable with no loans and you have a emergency fund set up and you have health insurance then he says you venture out into investing so this if you do it in this strategy even when the market price fluctuates or you know the inflation bond markets fluctuate you are still in a position where you're not feeling choked the only problem where you would really feel choked is if you are completely dependent upon income from the bonds to survive let's say we invested heavily in bonds and in stocks and you're riding these cycles and you're reliant on bond income to survive then you can get choked because inflation can suddenly rear its head and you don't have time to offload the bonds because you're caught yourself napping and you're stuck receiving far less on the rupee per rupee and then you get yourself jammed up so this is true but if you follow what anand is saying and you're prudent and you're slow and you're cautious you should be fine and like what chadi also said the first million or the first 10 lakhs whatever you want to look at it as is the hardest once you achieve that making that grow and multiply it gets a lot easier of course as long as you don't keep your ambitious expenses also in pace with that you'll be fine as long as you continue living the frugal life you're living the first 10 is hard after that it gets very easy to multiply that further and further without much effort it pretty much runs on autopilot after a certain point then after a point you don't need to worry about it anymore because all that money you can't spend in your lifetime anyways then you stop really worrying about it like how buffett really doesn't worry too much about things anything else you want to conclude on that's about it just keep investing uh keep reading as i said in my previous video and this one i'm rereading the intelligent investor please 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 reread this book very important and uh, i hope to see you guys more on this channel that's about it well thank you for watching the video today i hope you found it inf- informative and entertaining as always it was nice having shash with in the studio and i'll see you in another one soon bye it's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me i have written two books in english the alchemy of money and ordinary stocks extraordinary profits these books are published by us and are ready if you want to procure a copy send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish@gmail.com Once again I thank you for your support. If you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.